again everyone, I hope you're well. Another instalment from my vice and today we are going to be tying the peeping caddis which is an imitation of the cased caddis lava which can be found in, to be fair, in most bodies of water, certainly around the UK and probably abroad as well. Caddises are very, very common. Um, and these larvae live on the bottom of the riverbanks or the still waters and they create a case around them of junk detrius that they find on the lake or riverbed usually stones twigs that sort of thing and then they'll peep out with their little legs when they're moving around or searching for food and then when it's time to hatch and this is designed to imitate that larval stage and i got the idea for this when um brad from tokens very kindly sent me some hooks and beads and in it there was some rayon chenille in light olive and uh, it's just the right color for this so we're going to tie it in the vise, I have a Togan's Barbless Jig 60 degree hook in size 14, and I have paired that with a slotted tungsten Togan's Brown Magic Bead in 3.2 millimeters. And what we're going to do is we're going to get the thread started behind the bead, and then we're going to take the thread all the way down to the bend, and then back up again. Just laying down a good base of thread is good practice, so we're going to do that. Snip off your excess. Right, I have taken some of that rayon chenille, and as you can see, I've snipped off a length, and I've just burnt the end, and that is the head of the caddis lava, and that's going to be pointing over the back of the hook. Now, you don't want to be pointing too far over the back. Uh, probably there is fine. So we are now going to catch that in pinch and loop, make sure it's on the top, make sure you're happy with where it's sat yeah, like that and then take the thread, making sure the chenille doesn't wrap the wrong way around the hook shank take the thread all the way down trapping in that rayon chenille as you go and that leaves you, you see there, I'll snip off the excess first so you're not distracted by the wiggly bit there we go, it's all gone. Um, that leaves you just the tiny bit sticking out at the end, which is the cased caddis, or the, the head of the, the cased caddis. And we want that pointing slightly down so you can take the thread just round the bend, um, because of course the jig hook is going to fish upside down. Next, we need to wax our thread, and the reason for that is we're tying in some partridge legs. So I have here an English partridge feather. I've just um, caught it in my hackle pliers by the tip because we're tying it in by the tip and I'm drawing all those fibres back to give me something to tie in. And then we're going to tie that in right here. There we go. And then what we're going to do is take your, take your pliers the number of wraps is up to you, um, but draw the fibres so you're wrapping down, as, as you've seen in other videos of mine, draw the fibres back so you're wrapping down the stem of the feather, mind the hook point, and just keep wrapping and draw everything back because we want these legs pointing that away. We want them pointing the same way as the head of that caddis. And I would recommend using all of the fibres on your partridge feather, but what that does depend on is the quality of your partridge feather. So there we go. I'm happy with that. So when you're happy with what you've got, tie it off. Again, it's a slightly alien doing it at the back of the hook, but nonetheless. I've got my thread a bit long there, so I'm going to shorten my thread. Just go couple of turns in front, couple of turns behind, cross the thread again for good measure, there we go, and then snip off the excess. Done. Right, those are the legs, they're all going to be drawn forwards, they're going to get all scraggly and horrible, so don't worry too much about neatness, this is, this is scruffy.
Next, I really like a, just a little bit of glint to catch a fish's attention. Nothing too in your face. So I've gone with uh, Togan's Prism Dubbing in burnt orange. It's a lovely colour. It's kind of in keeping with the body in a way that I'm, I'm about to do. But a tiny pinch to start with. Dub it on your thread. Nice thin dubbing noodle. But not too tight at the same time. So I'm just going to brush it out as well. There we go. We're going to wrap that up. And literally, don't trap down any of your partridge. Is that it? One more for luck. There we go. That I'm happy with. No, I'm not. I want to go again. That I'm happy with. Take off the excess, an extra turn. There we go. Right. Next, a rib. Now you can use wire if you want to. Um, I never have for my case caddises. I really like using a bit of monofilament or fluorocarbon. And I've just got some, I think it's four pound here. So I'm just going to tie that in. And it's slippery stuff. So what we're going to do here is we are going to go all the way down just so that it doesn't come unstuck as we pull it and then we're going to take it all the way back up again there we go and snip off the excess so we've got the rib of monofilament we've got your dubbing you've got your legs you've got your little head of the caddis and what we need to do now is just tie the body and rib and fly and we're done so the body I have chosen, and it, again, it depends on the cased caddis where you are and the colours in the water. I've gone with a Vicuna dubbing in chocolate, and I have mixed that with some of Vicuna dubbing's squirrel dub. Um, and what that does is it darkens down the chocolate and adds guard hairs to the Vicuna dubbing to make the dubbing very, very scruffy indeed. Um, and what you want is... Dubbing on your thread, but not tight. It needs to be loose, it needs to be messy. So if you look at pictures of cased caddis lava, their case is not at all neat and tidy because it's made of sticks and stones. Okay? Right, there we go. So let me just catch that dubbing in behind the orange. Tighten it a bit once it's on and then bring it down. A bit more. So we're going right up behind the bead here, ribbing the fly and finishing it. There we go, happy with that. Take the excess off when you're happy. Couple of turns to secure it, and then rib. And the rib isn't really to provide segmentation. The case of the caddis lava is, as I say, it's a mess. This is to provide a little bit of um, extra security so that you can get a few fish out of this fly, not just one. Um, so take this up in nice, uh, even, open turns. You only need three or four, really. But you do need to make sure you secure it properly because, as I've said, monofilament or um, fluorocarbon, whatever you're using, incredibly slippery. No grip to it. There we go. And then snip off your excess. And there's two things left to do. First of all, whip finish. Because we're done. One, two, three. Make sure you go over the... Uh, point that you snipped off the mono and I do two whip finishes just for security there we go pull it tight make sure it beds the knot properly and now we need my tools which I have misplaced there we are found them and we need to give the fly a bit of a scrubbing Okay, including the feather, so I'm going to draw all that back. 
I like to bend and screw up the legs of the feather. They're going to get trashed anyway when you fish it because this is designed to bounce along the bottom. But it, it just gives that indication of legs when they're bent and, and all over the place as opposed to a bit uniform like the partridge feather. And that's it. The cased caddis. Get some rayon chenille from Togans and give it a go. You'll be surprised how effective it is if you're river fishing. Expect to lose some because this is supposed to bounce along the bottom. The caddis are not found in the water column in rivers. They are found on the bottom. I've had success with this on still waters. Fished deep but not on the bottom. So um, try that as well. Find me on social media or find me through Togans and let me know how it goes. And I will see you again next time. Thank you very much. Yeah.